You've played a good first half. You've played a real good first half, but, but I noticed during the course of the competition, you kept on looking up at the scoreboard. You can't be looking up at the scoreboard. It's like watching the runner in a race, and you're looking behind you to see if they're catching up with you, and you can't be doing that. Don't be looking at the scoreboard to see what the score is. You need to keep your eyes focused on Jesus and not on the scoreboard. Many of you feel as if though during this first half, you've got cuts and you've got scrapes and you've got bruises and you've been beat up. And you have been, but you've fought a good fight so far and you need to keep on fighting the fight that you're in right now. You can't allow your, your, your opponent to make progress. You can't allow your opponent to, 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 to have confidence in what he is doing. You give him confidence and he'll take hold as a, as a stronghold, and he'll try to advance his cause and his purpose. Your opponent, your opponent will look like you, and he will act like you. But understand this, your opponent is your enemy. He will do anything and everything possible to beat you. Anything he can. But you can't allow that to happen. Now some of you here, some of you here have been making preparations your entire life for the competition that you're in. And you've been studying, you've been getting in God's Word every single day of your life. And, and you have this close walking relationship with God each and every day. You're committed to your cause, you're committed to what you're doing in serving the Lord. Other of, others maybe aren't as committed and you show up for practice every now and then. And you're a little concerned because maybe, just maybe, you have this fear that maybe some way, somehow, you're going to be overtaken by your opponent and your opponent's going to beat you. But I want to tell you right now, the game's already won. Don't worry about the scoreboard. Don't worry about what the final score is going to be. It's over. It's a done deal. You're going to win. We are winning. We'll keep on winning. We'll never lose. We'll never get behind in the score. In fact, when that score is, when that horn finally sounds at the end of this game, you're going to see that it's not even been a competition. We're blowing the opponent away. We're blowing him away. Each and every one of us on this team, on the Jesus team, we all have different purposes and different reasons of what we're doing. See, not everyone on Jesus' team, like a football team, can be the quarterback. Not everyone on a baseball team can be the pitcher. We all have different purposes and different roles. But yet, without the center on a football team, the quarterback would never get the ball. Without the catcher on a baseball team, that ball is going to pass by every time. We all have different roles on this team, and we need to fulfill those roles for which we've been called to fulfill. You know what your role is. You know what you need to be doing each and every day to fulfill your purpose and your reason for being on this team. But some of us are bruised. Some of us feel as if though we've been beat up. We've got some scars to show that things have been difficult, that things have been rough. I understand that. We're bruised and we're hurting, but we're winning. We're winning. Every single time that in this, that, that, that during this first half of your life, Satan has been trying to get you down. And he'll take circumstances and situations. When you're having a struggle, when you're having a hard time, your opponent is pointing a finger at you and saying, See, where is the God that you serve now? That's what he's saying to you. He's whispering in your ear. 
He's whispering in your ear telling you that you'll never get out of the circumstance that you're in right now. Where you are, you might as well settle in because that's where you're going to be for the rest of your life. Don't listen to him. Don't listen to him. He is the father of lies. He will say anything he can to get you down. You're on the Jesus team. You're on God's team. I'm telling you right now, he cannot defeat you. Your adversary, the devil, your opponent, cannot defeat you. But what he wants to do is when you're going through the hard times of your life and he's there knocking, knocking at your door, he's tapping you on the shoulder. And he's telling you how things are. Don't believe him. Don't believe him. What he is trying to do what he is trying to do is he's trying to take your witness, the witness that you have, and snuff it out. He's trying to take the light that you have and put it underneath a basket and snuffing it out. Rather, what we need to do is recognize that we are under attack. We have an opponent. And we need to take that light that we have and put it on top of the hill. We need to let the world know that we are Christians. We have to let the world know whose team we are on. We have to let the world know who we serve. We're on the Jesus team. We're on the Jesus team. We've got a big second half ahead of us. It's not going to be easy. In fact, if anything, it's going to be more challenging, more difficult. But you're prepared for it. You're preparing for it. You're getting ready. But there's things that we need to do. There's things that we have to do during the second half. We have to. So he's going to attack you more during the second half than you've ever been attacked before. He's going to put doubts in your mind. He's going to attack your personal being. He may attack your physical body. He may attack your mind. He may attack your family. He may attack your friends. He may attack you at work. Because he's coming. And he's coming with a vengeance. What do you have to do? What are you going to do? So you've been fighting the good fight of faith. You've been running the race that God's put out before you. You've been, you've been in the arena. You've been preparing. But what are you going to do now? Don't sit back just because, just because the Jesus team is way ahead. Don't sit back and think that because we're ahead by as far as we are, it's time to relax and sit back and let things just happen because we need to be even more ready for this second half because your opponent is going to come at you with everything they've got. So what are you going to do? What are you going to do? I'm telling you right now, the first thing you need to do <coughs> is to anoint yourself. You need to anoint yourself with the Holy Spirit. You need to anoint yourself and turn it all over to God. Ask for God for the anointing on your life each and every day. Every day. Ask God to be with you, to watch over you, to take care of you each and every day. Commit yourself daily for the race that's in front of you. Commit yourself daily for the competition that's before you. Commit yourself every day to prepare yourself for your adversary. Commit yourself. Anoint yourself. Anoint your family. Pray for your family daily. Walk with your family daily in the Lord. Whether they want to walk with you or not. Whether they want to walk with the Lord or not. Commit your family to the Lord. Anoint them. 
Ask God to bless your family. Ask God to watch over your family. Ask God to keep your family in His care. Sometimes with our family, we want to press and press and press and press. But just ask God to bless and bless and bless and bless. He hears you. He hears you. Now, when we're praying, it may not seem as if though God is hearing us because we want that instant victory. It doesn't always come instantly. But He's hearing your cry. Ask God to anoint your family. Pray for your family daily. Pray for your friends. Ask God to be with your friends. To bless your friends daily. Daily. Ask God to anoint them to work in their lives for His kingdom, for, for, for His team. Ask God daily to be with you at work and with your co-workers who you want to go out and witness to. Ask God to give you the strength, the courage, to the stamina to be a witness for Him. You see, there's going to be those circumstances and situations when you're at work or when you're at school that someone's going to reject God's Word. And then we're going to sulk. Don't sulk. Just know that your adversary, the devil, is going around like a roaring lion looking to see who he can devour. He cannot devour you because you're a child of God. You're a kid of the king. But he just wants to put you down. Don't allow him to do that. Stay strong in the Lord, knowing that things will happen at work and things will happen at school, that people will reject his word. But that doesn't mean we've lost the battle. It doesn't mean we've lost the fight. Turn it all over to God in everything that you do. It's a battle. It's a battle. The first half is over. We've got to be strong in the second half. Ask for God's anointing. The next thing you need to do through the second half, if you really want to be competitive, if you really want to work for this team, the Jesus team, then may I encourage you to get in this book every single day. Learn of God. You who are in the Word every single day. Now it's more time for you to more focus on what, you've, what you're doing in God's Word. To learn more of Him. To focus. You folks who aren't in His Word every single day. I've got to encourage you. I've got to, I've got to tell you, please, please, please open God's Word up. He will reveal things to you as He's never been revealed to you before. But if you're not in His Word, how are you going to know? Get in His Word. Every day. Pray every day. Think of those folks in your life that you come across, that you know, your friends, your family, your co-workers, your neighbors, whoever it may be. People that you don't even know that have, we have prayer concerns up on the wall. God knows those folks. Pray for them. Get in communication with your head coach. Get in communication with a team owner. Ask him in your prayer life what he wants you to do for his team. What does God want you to do during this second half? What does he want you to do? I don't know. That's going to be between you and him, and your responsibility is whatever it is that he wants you to do, to do it. Plain and simple, your responsibility is to do what God wants you to do. He's the owner of the team. It's not going to be an easy second half. Not at all. But let me tell you.
tell you something. As we get into this second half, you're going to find this out. That your adversary, your opponent, is going to start more trash talking in your life than you've ever seen. They'll be talking smack to you every single day. Because he knows this game's almost over. And he knows that he cannot win. And he's going to be talking to you. He'll be in your face every day. Every day. Don't, don't think otherwise. But daily put on the armor of God. Daily clothe yourself with the Lord. Daily. We're going to win. No question about it. I already know that. At the end of the game, when the final horn sounded, the game's over. Here's what I've read in this book about the end of the game. It says there, those who are victorious, those who are victorious, will have the right to eat from the tree of life, which is in the paradise of God. To those who are victorious, we won't be hurt by the second death. To those who are victorious, we'll be given some of the hidden manna. To those who are victorious, we'll be given a white stone with their names written on it. To those who are victorious, you will rule over the nations. You'll be given the morning star. To those who are victorious, you're going to be dressed in white. You'll be pillars in God's temple. To those who are victorious, you'll be given the right to sit with Jesus on his throne. To those who are victorious, you'll be given a crown of righteousness. The game's about over. Not much time left in the game. Call yourself a Christian and truly have Jesus Christ living in your heart. The victory is yours. The rewards are yours. There's enough rewards to go around for everybody. There's enough. But there's so many people outside the doors of this church who need to hear the Word of God. There's so many people outside the doors of this church who need to see you and how you are competing. See you, see the life that you're living. So that they can be a part of the Jesus team. I'm proud to be on the Jesus team. I'm proud. It's the greatest team that's ever been assembled. It's the most powerful team that's ever been assembled. It's a team that cannot lose. That's the kind of team I want to be on. I'm thrilled to be on it. You may be sitting there questioning yourself right now and saying, am I on the Jesus team? 
Or am I just here today just to fill a spot because someone in my family said, let's go to church today. Or maybe you're sitting here because you've always come to church, because you've always come to church, and it's the social thing to do. And you're just wondering about this Jesus team that's going to win. Because when it's all said and done, there's going to be a winning team and there's going to be a losing team. And you're going to be on one of those two teams. You're going to be on one of the two teams. The one team that loses, loses. I mean, I'm talking about loses. To be cast into outer darkness at the end of the game. Never to be in the presence of anything good again. Never to be in the presence of anything righteous again. Never to be in the presence of anything holy. Or you can make a choice to be on the winning team. I don't know about you, but the winning team's cool. The winning team's good. It's your choice. To be on this team, this Jesus team, it's real simple. It takes no work to be on the Jesus team. You don't have to give money in this offering to be on the Jesus team. You don't have to help a little lady carry her groceries across the street to be on this Jesus team. To be on this team, the winning team, all you have to do is say, Jesus, I want to be on your team. I want to be on your team. I want you to be my coach. I want you to be the team owner. I want you to come and live in my heart. And that owner, that coach, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, is going to put a big smile on his face. He says, You qualify, you're a part of this team. Come, come, be on my team. And I will give you a crown of righteousness for all eternity. All you have to do is want to be on his team. Don't think you have to do anything great. You don't have to try out for the team. Because you can't make the team on your own. You just have to ask him if you can be on it. That's all you need to do. Do you want to be on this team? Winning team? Or losing team? I'm not on that losing team anymore. I used to be. I'm on this team. I'm on this team. There's sunshine in my whole in my soul today, you know. It's good to be on the winning team. If you're not on it, get on it. If you're on it, keep running the race. Because there is laid up for you in heaven the crown of righteousness. Not only for you, but for all who believe. There's Amen. Many times during the second half that you're going to get tired, you're going to grow weary in all that you're doing. I just want to encourage you to keep on going. Just keep on going. Look up. Know where your strength comes from. It doesn't come from the mountains. It comes from the Lord. And you can mount up on the wings of eagles. Your strength comes from the Lord. Keep on going. Do not give 